As with so many of the greatest romances, love and tragedy go hand in hand. Hollywood is no exception. The love story of Christopher and Dana Reeve is so full of tragedy that it's unfair. However, their love is only deepened from sorrow, and the difference they made in the world following their painful ordeal is incredible. Because it's always um, a series of, it's always a bumpy ride. It's always a kind of a roller coaster effect. Uh, in the summer of 1987, Christopher Reeve attended the Williamstown Theatre Festival in Massachusetts. While sitting front row at a late-night performance by the Cabaret Corps, Christopher noticed one of the singers. She was a pretty blonde with a beautifully vibrant smile and a voice like a songbird. His eyes never left the stage. As the show ended, the star went up to the young woman and introduced himself. He was already in love. The man Dana met was soft-spoken, kind, and not far removed from Superman's alter ego, Clark Kent. She was caught off guard by his interest in having a conversation with her, and later, when he called her, Dana agreed to go on a date with him. Five years later, on a rainy day in that same Williamstown, the lovebirds exchanged vows before a small gathering of friends and family. The intimate ceremony was simple yet romantic. Their plain gold wedding band spoke volumes of what was truly important to them their deep and endless love. Years later, Dana proved that they were not mere words, but an everlasting promise. Wayne, but I've been thinking, you know, there must be a lot of questions about me that people in the world would like to know the answer. Of course, yes. In 1985, Christopher took up horse riding on the set of the film. As with every task he set his mind to, he became really good, and it was not long before he began competing in events. In May 1995, Christopher traveled to Virginia to compete in a jumping event on his thoroughbred stallion affectionately known as Buck. It wasn't a free kick or buck by the horse. Instead, it was deadly in its simplicity. On the third jump, a standard three-foot jump, Buck came surging towards a wall to jump, panicked, and stopped. Reed was thrown forward head first over the horse and landed on the ground in a near perpendicular position. The weight of Reeve's six-foot, four-inch, 230-pound body shattered his top two vertebrae and severely damaged his spinal cord. Reportedly, the extent of his injury meant that his skull and spine were no longer connected. This resulted in fluid buildup in his lungs, constant pain, and an inability to breathe on his own, as well as complete paralysis from the neck down. He'd filmed the movie where he played a person with paraplegia seven months prior. He'd spent substantial time around people with spinal cord injuries in preparation for that role. Every day, he'd left their clinic feeling grateful for not being in their predicament, and now he was there. Reeve was heartbroken. He could not believe what had happened to him. The road to recovery was challenging, to say the least. And at one particularly difficult stage during his rehabilitation, he actually considered giving up his life. Christopher quietly whispered to Dana, maybe we should let me go. But she was not ready to let go of the man she loved. Instead, she assured her husband that she would always be there for him no matter what. I'm only going to say this once. I will support whatever you want to do because this is your life and your decision. But I want you to know that I'll be with you for the long haul, no matter what. You're still you, and I love you," said Dana. Commenting on this a couple of years later, she added, When it's actually the person you love, the person you know, and there's no head injury, no brain damage, she said, it's him. It's the essence of him. And that's what I said to him. I said, it's you. She asked him to hold on for two years and then decide if he still wanted to consider saying goodbye to life forever. He accepted. I think you only have two choices when you have an injury like this. Either you vegetate and look out the window, or you get busy and try to affect change. And uh, the second, of course, appeals to me a lot more. He eventually settled into his new life, and Dana stood by her words and by his side. They still lived, did things together, and found ways to have fun. After six long months of rehabilitation and drastic renovations, Christopher and Dana returned home, a very different couple, but more in love than ever. The love and feel the love. And know that we're still a family and that we're great. We've now transcended into something where our moments together are even more valuable than they ever were. 
and I would not be where I am today with the positive outlook that I have and the sense of real hope and purpose if it were not for Dana, said Christopher. The couple's affection for one another was always apparent. Even though Christopher couldn't feel his wife's touch, she constantly put her hand on his arm or nestled his cheek. We're as physical with each other as we can be, and we're as close as we can be, said Dana in 2002. Never shying away from a challenge, Reeve decided to use his very public profile to educate people on and raise awareness of spinal cord injuries. But the point is, we're all one great big family, and any one of us could get hurt at any moment. So uh, that taught me a really big lesson about complacency. You know, we should never walk by somebody who's uh, in a wheelchair and be afraid of them or think of them as a stranger could be us. In fact, it is us," he said during an Oprah interview. The couple struggled to find a cure for paralysis, testifying before Congress and holding fundraisers. Further to his many television interviews, Christopher founded the Christopher Reeve Paralysis Foundation, later renamed the Christopher and Dana Reeve Foundation, which raises much-needed research money. All the while, his beloved wife Dana was by his side out of the spotlight, still always supporting, helping, loving. The press labeled her Saint Dana and Superwoman, to which she replied, Initially, I felt very uncomfortable with that. Then I thought, really, my job here is to be the voice for the many, many spouses who are caregivers who don't have the advantage of the world patting them on the back every day. In 2004, Dana was shattered. It was October and Christopher and Dana were working on the opposite sides of the country. Christopher was promoting the Brooke Ellison story, which he had directed, and Dana was performing on stage in LA. It was the first time since the accident that they had been so far apart. Christopher was being treated at the time for a pressure wound and had been prescribed antibiotics. On Saturday, October 9th, Christopher took his evening dose of the antibiotic and suddenly went into cardiac arrest before falling into a coma. It was all so sudden and unexpected that Dana could do nothing but board the next flight home upon hearing the news. The hours before she could be beside Christopher's side must have felt like an eternity. Despite his comatose state, it seemed as though Christopher was waiting for Dana, as shortly after her arrival, he tragically passed away. Her Superman had left her in a sudden cardiac arrest. After all they had been through, after surviving for so long, it was incomprehensible for it to end like this so suddenly. But it had. After 12 years of knowing each other and supporting each other through all the tough times, she was left alone. But she could not stop loving him. In an interview after his death, Dana said, I promise to love, honor, and cherish him till death do us part. Well, I can't do that, because I will love, honor, and cherish him forever. Dana, although grieving, knew that Christopher had left an incredible legacy, and the work and research he had set in motion could not end now. And I'm glad I did. Because I wouldn't have missed this kind of welcome for the world, thank you. One month after his death, she was unanimously elected the new chairperson of the Christopher Reeve Paralysis Foundation. Christopher was gone, but he lived on through the fantastic work Dana was now doing on his behalf. Within months of Chris's unexpected death, she suffered the sudden loss of her mother, whom she was very close to. Then, Dana was diagnosed with stage four lung cancer. Despite everything, Dana managed to stay positive. She wasn't just resilient, she was joyful about life. I'm just a woman whose husband fell off a horse and I'm taking care of him and that's what you do. Tragically, Dana passed away only 18 months after Christopher. For every gut-wrenching event thrown at them, they managed to not only fall more deeply in love, but use the occurrence to make a difference in the world. Passionate, determined, persistent. Christopher and Dana's great love story is inspiring and encouraging. It's yet another reminder to embrace the moment and each other. Michael J. Fox and Tracy Pollan have been married for over three decades, which is a huge deal, especially in the scandalous world of Hollywood. The couple has been the definition of strength since their lives were turned upside down three years into their marriage. While Pollan and Fox had an on-screen romance and family ties, a real-life relationship didn't blossom right away. I'm 22, and, and my energy is right now focused on, on my career and, and on just trying to set up the base for my life. 
At the time, Tracy was going steady with 80s heartthrob Kevin Bacon. The two had met five years earlier while doing a play together and shared an apartment in New York and a farmhouse in Connecticut. I always thought Tracy was cool, Fox said years later, but it was like a couple of married people who worked together and liked each other. Fox and Pollen's relationship is said to have blossomed on the set of the movie Bright Lights, Big City. Not long after Lemon Sky, the movie on which Bacon met the love of his life, Kira Sedgwick, premiered. It sounds really horrible, but it was one of those things, the actor said. Someone goes, did you hear that so-and-so aren't together anymore? And you go, hmm, that's too bad. Where's the phone? Michael and Tracy started dating, and seven months later, he proposed. At the time, the young star admitted that he was most nervous about the wedding secrecy. I wasn't really worried that she would say no, he recalled. The toughest part was trying to figure out when to get married and then to figure out how nobody else could know about it. They had cause for concern. Pollen and Fox had started to get threatening letters, up to 15 a day, in February 1988. The frightening messages prompted the actor to tighten security everywhere he went, and Pollen started using an alias when she traveled. Soon after, the accused threat maker pleaded guilty to three counts of making terrorist threats and was sentenced to three years of probation in order to stay away from the family. And the couple was determined not to put their lives on hold. When Pollen got pregnant, Fox squeezed Lamaze classes into his shooting schedule. We did the whole womb music deal where we put the headphones on Tracy's stomach and played everything from Vivaldi to the Allman Brothers. And what do you know? Life was about to blindside the couple though not in a way they could have ever prepared for. Two years after they welcomed their boy, Fox was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease at the very young age of 29. I mean, I, I thought I'd hurt my shoulder because uh, I had a twitch in my pinky and I thought I'd hurt my shoulder doing some stunt or something. And, um, and uh, the doctor said, you have, you have Parkinson's disease. You, you, he said, the good news is you have about 10, 10 years of work left. While on location filming Doc Hollywood, he began to notice trembling in his fingers and hand. The trembling was the first symptom of early onset Parkinson's, an incurable degenerative condition of the central nervous system that affects motor function over time. When it happened, he told Tracy that it was going to be okay, but he was actually freaking out. I had no idea what Parkinson's was and I was in denial. You've probably read in people that I'm a nice guy, but when the doctor first told me I had Parkinson's, I wanted to kill him. I thought, what a shitty thing to say to somebody. I just knew it was a mistake. It's been more than 30 years since the day he had to break the news to his wife, but the memory of her reaction is still enough to move him to tears. We didn't know what to expect, Fox said. One of the things I'll always love Tracy for is that at that moment, she didn't blink. His family handled it quietly, but eventually Fox fell into a depression and started drinking heavily. It would be a while before he got a handle on his new reality. Fox's drink of choice was wine, sometimes by the bottle, and he began to hide the bottles from Tracy. But Pollen knew what was going on and his drinking and dark mood caused friction between the couple. Well, I mean, I used to drink to party, but then I was drinking, now I was drinking alone and just drinking to just not be- Every day? Every day. So you were self-medicating? Yeah. Fox's moment of reckoning came when Pollen found him one morning, passed out on the floor. She didn't get angry. Instead, she looked bored, asking him, is this what you want? Is this what you want to be? Pollen then walked out the door. I didn't scream, I didn't, I wasn't angry. I was kind of feeling done. He realized he had no choice but to take life one day at a time. After that, he recalled, Tracy said to me, you showed up again. Your sense of humor was back, and you were just there. Pollen said she had tougher days than others, but those were mainly when he seemed unsure of what she was going to do, which manifested in his erratic behavior. Through it all, we've loved each other, Fox said, and that love never died, Pollen added. We had a solid foundation to begin with. And in 1998, Fox finally went public about his disease. From that day forward, Fox became the celebrity face of the cause, and he and Pollen have worked tirelessly since then to raise money for research and awareness. They launched the Michael J. Fox Foundation, which has become the largest nonprofit funder of Parkinson's research globally. So far, they've raised nearly $1 billion to speed a cure for Parkinson's disease. Fox had to endure some difficult stretches with his condition, and Pollen's sense of humor had helped a great deal. She's there in the front lines with Michael every single day. 
it's great. You know, I love working with Michael, and um, we're very simpatico. Well, Tracy's amazing, he said. If there's something funny, let's get to the funny. We'll deal with the tragic later, she says. He really needed her support in 2018, when his trademark optimism waned during one of the darkest periods of his life. First, Fox underwent spinal surgery to remove a tumor, which forced him to relearn how to walk. Then, four months later, he suffered a fall in their home and shattered his arm. I was underneath the phone, on the kitchen floor, alone with a broken arm, waiting for the ambulance to show up, he said. I couldn't believe the amount of fury I had toward myself for being so careless to do this and to let down my surgeons. But ultimately, he realized that one could be a realist and an optimist at the same time. If you don't accept it, you can't move forward. It's just, and then, and then it's just, I'm so lucky. I'm so, I, I mean, I've got this beautiful wife and these great kids and, 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 and life is just good. Fittingly, for a man with five Emmy Awards, watching television helped restore his positive outlook on life. Two years after the accident, Fox celebrated the 20th anniversary of the Michael J. Fox Foundation. They started the foundation literally with nothing. And now, they're responsible for 17 active therapies that are being used that were never thought of before. And the Michael J. Fox Foundation will do whatever it takes to speed a cure for Parkinson's. This is our 20th year. If we knew it was gonna be 2020, we would have started a year earlier or a year later because this year really blows, he quipped. Fox also retired from acting due to the effects of living with Parkinson's. He previously retired at 40 and he threw his energy into his foundation, but he later returned to acting, guest starring on The Good Wife and Rescue Me, the latter of which earned him his fifth Emmy. TV and film aside, Fox has regained his optimism and literally takes life one step at a time due to his condition. Optimism is a choice he added. But in a way, it isn't. There's no other choice. I don't think there's any other viable choice than to hope for the best and work toward it. Uh, when you have gratitude, uh, optimism is sustainable because you, you, you keep coming back to your gratitude. And, and part of gratitude is acceptance. When Oprah Winfrey asked if he felt Parkinson's had been a gift for their marriage, giving them no choice but to become stronger and more in sync, if they were to keep on going, Fox said, I've often referred to Parkinson's as the gift that keeps on taking. It's a gift in that it really gave me a whole different appreciation for life. It hasn't allowed me to take anything for granted. Date nights for the couple still include trips to the Emmys and the Oscars, but he and Pollen make a point of enjoying each other's company everywhere, whether it's in another country or on the couch watching TV. And they deal every day with Fox's condition, but always together as a team. She was one of the biggest television stars of the 90s, had a reputation for being a diva, and, of course, a crazy love life. However, Shannon Doherty's life has changed significantly since she was 19. Meeting her husband of more than 10 years and getting diagnosed with breast cancer have forever altered the actress' perspective. Shannon got her start in acting as a child, but it wasn't until her teen years that she starred in her biggest hits, like the movie Heathers or the iconic teen drama Beverly Hills 90210. The actress has been married three times, but before that, she had already taken part in two broken engagements. Her first one to health club owner, Chris Fufus, lasted 10 months before she shortly moved on to the second one, this time with Max Factor heir, Dean J. Factor. I just try to act normal and believe that like life is, you know, you just move on. The air filed a restraining order against Doherty in May 1993. She threatened to shoot me, he said. I heard the chamber pulled back. At that point, I hastily exited the house through the back door. He also accused Shannon of threatening and assaulting him verbally, throwing a log through a window to get into his house and trying to run him over with a car. Even if Shannon's engagements ended in such a disastrous way, she was able to move on quickly. I think it was very easy for me to be in that mindset because I was fairly sheltered. Only six months later, she married actor and singer Ashley Hamilton, whom she had only known for two weeks. At this point, Ashley and Shannon were only 19 and 22. The actress filed for divorce five months later. Could their young age have something to do with their split? In 2002, the actress married poker player Rick Solomon. This marriage was also short-lived, since the pair had it annulled only nine months later. Solomon would go on to film an adult tape with Paris Hilton and marry Pamela Anderson, twice. After these short-lived engagements and marriages, 
Shannon didn't marry again for a long time, and many wondered if she ever would. I mean, I learned so much about myself. I learned so much about the world and about people in it. That's when the love of her life, photographer Kurt Iswarienko, came into her life. The couple met in 2008, when he was assigned to photograph her for a magazine. At the time, Kurt was married to another actress, Taryn Band. The photographer ended up filing for divorce, which Band did not take well. After divorcing, Iswarienko went on to date Doherty until the couple married in 2011. Shannon has since opened up about it. She told People magazine, Marriage to me is such a gigantic commitment that it's not something I'd ever go into lightly anymore. I've learned my lesson. We are glad she was able to grow through her journey. The beginning of the actress and photographer's relationship was broadcast in Doherty's short-lived reality show, Shannon says. They even aired the wedding in the season finale. After marrying, the Lovebirds relationship continued to be happy, peaceful, and far apart from Shannon's drama-filled previous ones. However, in 2015, tragedy struck. The TV star was diagnosed with breast cancer. It was so weird for me to be diagnosed and then somebody who was, you know, seemingly healthy to go first. It was really, like, shocking. The actress revealed to People magazine how she shared the news with her husband I called him, which was horrible of me, Shannon explained. When she got home, her husband told her, We are going to get through this. You're strong, and you're powerful, and you're not going anywhere. You have so much to do in your life. We are going to get through it as a family. One would think dealing with a deadly illness would have made it harder for the actress' marriage to work. But instead, it brought Shannon and Kurt closer together. Doherty told People magazine, Cancer solidified us. Kurt and I have a much deeper appreciation for each other now. The star has even talked about how the disease has reinforced her relationship. My marriage was always strong, but it's made my marriage a thousand times stronger. I could not have gotten through this without my husband, she told Entertainment Tonight. As well as fortifying her relationship with the photographer, Cancer gave the actress the chance to let go of her past. Even if it had been long since she left her teen years behind, Shannon had kept her guard up for decades. She thought of it as a way of protecting herself, since many fans and media outlets had bad-mouthed her and called her a diva at the beginning of her career. Being in a business is very hard on, on people, particularly on women, and I just, I don't, I don't think I trusted men completely. I, I also didn't trust women, you know, I just didn't trust. However, when she was diagnosed, everything changed. When I got cancer the first time, it was this really beautiful thing, because it finally stripped all of that away. Those walls were like, eliminated. That sort of childhood resentment, 19 to me is childhood, was gone, she explained. The experience made the star reflect on her past and meditate on whether her actions can be good or not. At the end of that, what I came out with was, I have good karma. It may not seem like it, but I've been a really good human being, she told Elle. In 2018, the actress finally went into remission, meaning that the signs and symptoms of her cancer had significantly decreased or even disappeared. Unfortunately, the good news didn't last very long, and the disease came back in 2019. Shannon knew how hard learning this was going to be for her loved ones. She decided to invite her oncologist to dinner with her family and friends, so he could answer their questions. She told Elle magazine, Everybody got to ask questions and know what we were looking at as a group, as a team. Her cancer was in metastasis, also known as stage 4. This means that it has spread and the actress will be in treatment for the rest of her life. I think people have a mental picture of stage 4 cancer as someone sitting in a grey hospital gown looking out a window on their deathbed, Iswarienko told Elle magazine regarding his wife's diagnosis. They look at you like you're dead man walking, basically and that uh, they need to say their goodbyes to you or something. I don't see a cancer patient when I look at Shannon. I see the same woman I fell in love with. She looks healthy and vital. The actress has explained that, because of her diagnosis, she realized that she didn't need to be sexy all the time for her husband to love her. How Kurt sees me really helps me be a better person. He was always like, I've never seen someone handle something so difficult with so much grace. You're so strong. Thanks to this, Doherty understood that her quiet strength was far sexier and more appealing than what she had before.
Shannon is thankful to her husband for being so supportive of her and has even called him my rock in every possible way. He also opened up about their journey on a telecast by Stand Up To Cancer saying, I have the easy part, just being a support system for her. I wish I could do it for her, you know? Since her diagnosis, the actress has learned to appreciate the small things in her life. I try to treasure all the small moments that most people don't really see or take for granted, Doherty explained to Elle magazine. Doherty added that she wants to write letters for her loved ones to read once she is gone. There are things I need to say to my mom. I want my husband to know what he's meant to me, she stated. In an interview with ET, Shannon explained how the disease changed her perspective for the better. As brutal as it was, cancer was a gift. It opened me up, it taught me about myself, and it changed me as a human being forever. The star shared that, after being the strong one all her life, the disease helped her become more vulnerable. Despite her diagnosis, Doherty has continued working and released three projects in 2021. At the end of that year, she shared that her dream for 2022 was for cancer research to advance. She plans to continue raising awareness about the disease. Here at Rumor Juice, we wish her a happy and healthy life and that she continues sharing all the wisdom and truth of her journey.